this is Lucky Smith, and I have the pleasure of interviewing Matt Cedillo. Matt Cedillo is a spoken word artist, and Matt, how did you get started in this? Um, I originally actually had been doing a lot of political activism, and uh, after a uh, an or after a um, and a big march, I came to Mike and Dim Lights, and I saw poets doing um, politically charged poetry and having. Um, um, wait, what was that march concerning? Like, what was the march concerning? Well, it was May Day, so it was workers' rights. It was workers' rights. It was a uh, was a uh, May Day, 2008. And afterwards, my friend brought me to um, Mike and Dim Lights, and there was a um, people were doing poetry there, and I saw them doing politically charged poetry, and I thought, you know, I, I could try that. And, um, so this is the first time you tried poetry? 2008, uh, yeah. Okay. That first 2008, I remember, well I didn't try it then, I didn't try it for another month and a half. I had to actually write something, right? And, um, and so it went really well, it went really well. First, the first poem I did, it went pretty good. The second one was alright. third one went, went terrible, it went terrible, everyone hated it, it was too long and whatever. And I got really mad, so I came back with a poem that insulted all of them, it was really short. And I thought that was, I'm, I'm gonna bomb out, this is it, you know, like, I'm just like, you know, peace out, you know, fuck you guys, I'm done, right? But then uh, what actually, actually ended up happening is that they, they really loved it. <laughs> and then so then I was like, oh, so I came back the next week with a poem called I Remember the Alamo. And that became a real, like, I remember uh, that, one. that became a real standard for me. And so that became, uh, after that, people really loved that one. And the next thing I know, I was getting invited to shows just to do that particular poem. And after that, a couple months later, I wrote a poem called Gangsters. And people really liked that one. And that became, those became like my standards. And after that, you know, I started developing more and more poems. So where I have like different recognizable poems now, uh, people people remember. But uh, initially, those two poems I would get invited to places just to perform either one of those. And what were you, what was your profession before you became a poet? Uh, well, I was working in retail. I was a uh, well, I'd, I'd been a retail manager. I'd, I'd been i been a, a first assistant at a big five, and then I, I lost. I I kind of quit that, and then um, you know when the economic you know economy kind of turned down. You, you got demoted, and demoted, and demoted. We try to get back into any field. So I, had, I got back, and I was, uh, I went from like being like right next to a store manager down to like a department manager kind of thing, and um, that was really terrible. It was the worst job. The last, the last retail job I had was the worst job I've ever had. Um, I remember I was uh, during uh, the shopping season. I tried to quit, you know, because uh, this this four foot woman she was screaming at me, just yelling at me, just demeaning me. And so I was like, you know what? Forget this. I quit. Take out my name badge, hands or I quit. And she said, no, you don't. Pin it right back on me. And I was there for another six months. So you know, <laughs> if you can't quit, you're not free. So. And you are currently a full time poet now, right? Right. I was doing poetry at that time. Okay. When that was going on, uh, but then. It wasn't until I started booking college shows, and that money was almost as much as I was making with my normal job, that I realized I can dedicate full time to this. That, that, that's what I, that's what I need to do. So, all right, there we have a lot of readers. We have about three hundred thousand readers worldwide. How? So, explain to the people how you got your break. Because we know who you are. You're kind of like you know the celebrity in the poetry world, but outside of it, so that way people can understand that you know this is your only gig. This is Yes, that's correct. I'm a full-time, a full-time paid poet. I get uh, contracted by universities, and uh, if any of your readers are a part of clubs at universities or professors, I would love to. Uh, I'd love to, you know, have you draw me a line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I respond. So, did you have like? All right. So you went from you were trying to quit. You're just trying to find any type of job, right? And right. then you're doing poetry. Where was your break in poetry? Um. Uh, it was really, it was really a decision to quit my job. So I mean, I like booked like uh, Cal State Fullerton, I booked Cal Poly Pomona, I booked like, a bunch of places, and they were paying me to show up for, like an hour, the same I would make a whole week of work at, um, at did, my job. How did they book you, or was it just? For well, 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 okay. So initially, I mean, what made me bookable was that I had, uh, I had made, made a slam team. I made a slam team about four months into doing poetry. I was on the first ever Inland Empire slam team, uh, which was coached by Judah One. Okay, um, you were only. Four months. There's people who have been poetry their entire lives and you made it and you're on slam team. You realize you have like a natural talent at that point? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for the first four months I was on a slam team. That was really amazing to me. So that's what happened. And after that, out of nowhere, I was also um, about five months in, some guy wanted to publish me. And so then I, uh, and so that, that, that took a while before that actually happened. But um, that took another additional month. So it was like basically almost a year. 
a year and three months, I want to say, in, I have my first book published. You have your first book published. Uh, right. people find your book? What's the name of your book? What's the book? Yeah. The book is called For What I Might Do Tomorrow. Uh, it's a poetry book. You can find it at either my website, mattsadio.com, or Casa de Poesia, C-A-Z-A-P-O-E-S-I.com. Uh, that's the, that's the, the, the publishers. Or my website, which is mattsadio.com. And how much is how much can you do? Uh, well, if I, for shipping, transportation, all total, total, uh, total is eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. Yeah. How many copies have sold already? Um, How long is it? Yeah. We're looking at. I think we're. We think we. we, we uh, I know. I, I don't really know the number now. I just remember when we passed a thousand. After that, it was kind of just like. Is that on the market? Um. Well, about. I'd say about almost a, a little under two years now. A little two years. So. Not only are you a professional poet, but you're also a published writer, where some writers try and try and try to get published. I mean, it seems like as soon as you start doing po poetry, I mean, did you ever grow up when you were a kid? What did you want to do when you were a kid? What were well, your aspirations? Well, I wanted to be a writer. I wanted, I wanted to write. I wanted to do things. And I would, I mean, for years and years and years of my life, I would stare at the stars and I was just angry. But like, you know, oh, I have so much to offer and nobody even knows about it. And I, and I had this really, whatever, and I got these really horrible self-destructive habits. I drink too much. I would cause fights and all this kind of stuff because I didn't have an outlet for, for all this energy. And then, um, even when I first got involved in the poetry community, I wasn't even getting involved as a writer, I was getting more involved as a political activist, right? And I had this attitude that, you know, well, they may not like me, but they're going to respect me, right? Which is a terrible attitude to have with anything. You know, can you imagine, like, going to a party, like, well, they may not like me, but they're going to respect my dance moves. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? But, you know, it turned out, it worked out, I was embraced. It's a great, loving community, it's an embracing community, and, uh, and I became a part of it, I became an insider. In it, so. it is what it is now, yes. So, you said you were very self-destructive. What was the turning point for you at that point? Like, what, what were you involved with? You know, just like really, really just drank too much. And just a lot of stupid things. I would cause fights with people for no reason. And it was bad. And but you know, it, it, I, it's not like really a breaking point, like a movie, like where there's like that's rock bottom, and then all of a sudden I pick myself up. It's more like it, it happened more like a gradual thing. It's just like you know, it's kind of like this gradual breaking of day, and it's like slowing down. And be more folks and like asking myself what priorities, right? Yeah. Do I want to be an artist? Do I want to be a drunk? I mean, what, what, I, I have those two options, right? And it's like, I, I pick one or the other. How important is it to me to be drunk in public, you know? Is it more important than the career, you know? And so that was, these are the questions I started processing myself. It was like, I always had these two, like, two things inside me. Like, one of it, which was expressive and one which was really good think and was analytical and wanted to share. And the other was like, wanted to fight, wanted to compete. And I realized I was kind of like, I was kind of like um, like two men sharing one life, and, and that meant I had a choice. That meant I had a choice, and you know, so I chose I chose I chose the less destructive path, the more embracing path, you know. And are you still more of an activist, or what's your political views now? It's so hard. To, it's it's hard to really say what it is these because like I get booked as a poet like la last big show I did was Evergreen State College brought me up for an entire week right uh -huh. and so I, I did a lot of the political economy classes and I would perform poetry but then I would answer questions and then I would kind of do like a little political lecture you know and I would talk with the professors you know and so but I had my foot in so many rules because like that sounds like an intellectual right so as an intellectual I would have like you know I would have like a dinner with a lot of professors you know I, went to dinner, I had dinner with several different professors while I was up there I was up there for a week but then at night I go party with students, right? So I had my I still have my foot in being like a slam poet, being like, you know, this local like yeah, like, you know, youth whatever. And like how did you teach yourself? I mean, did you go to school or how how did you learn how to write poetry? Uh I learned basically just watching other people do it. I just like I saw what they did, I saw the techniques, I saw the structures they were using. And I just imitated him. I just imitated him. And you know, eventually I kind of created my own thing because a lot of my stuff was based on like things I stole. I stole from public speaking. So I would take yeah. some of the things I would see public speakers. You know, I was an activist, so I go to rallies for public speaking. So the way they rise and fall, and I would take that. But then I would like see how other poets structured things, like how they would like return to this, that, and the other, and how they how, how, just, just that structure. And I was never really much of a wordsmith in the poetry world. I was always really someone that had an idea and structured it really well. And it changed it. So that, that that's kind of that's kind of my MO and what I do. And have you 
formally education wise um have you gone far because the whole thing of nice and start over you sound like a perfect server person you went from server from your angry youth to activist to getting out of retail to starting over in mastering the poetry world to i understand you travel as well too right right, right. well the, po the poetry is what gets me to travel but like um when i do get to travel i also get to travel um, and, and speak about political issues just, just in the middle of Because, like, now, nowadays, like, you know, in a poetry venue, I'll get booked to do a show, and I'll end up doing, like, a 20-minute set, right? Yeah. But, like, at a college, they'll bring me on for, to speak to, for an hour to the students, right? So I'll do my 20-minute set, but I'll just take questions and answers. I'll also just start talking about... <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll start talking about whatever the topic is. And, like, can you name some of the states you've traveled to or where you have gone so far? Uh, this has only been about, what, two years, right, of your life so far? Three. Three. Yeah. So. Three-ish. Three-ish? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been to, uh, I've been to Boston. Uh, I've been to Florida. I've been to, um, I've been to uh, Olympia, Washington. I've been to Arizona. I've been to uh, Phoenix in Arizona, Flagstaff, Arizona, Kingman, Arizona, Bullet City. All these places play pulled me out to some shows. Um, I've been to Austin, uh, Chicago, uh, and then I've done like probably like eight or nine colleges just around the LA area as well. So, what's your next step? Uh, Next big thing I'm doing, I think I'm going up to UC Merced uh, to do some stuff with the Wands and Sauce. I'm not really sure if that's going to happen yet. And then, like, um, what's your, what's your thing? Are you going, is this, is this it? Are we going to see Matt, the poet? Well, or the next, or I'm going to, we're getting we're 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 another book of poetry. It's coming out. A much more ambitious book. It's going to be called The Same Stretch of Sidewalk. Much, much more ambitious. Um, we're looking at some real serious publishers. I don't want to say who, I don't want to jinx it, but some real serious publishers. Putting a real push me on that. But after that, I'm going to write a non-fiction book of political theory. Political theory. Yeah. But first, first this, get this done, next political theory. Political theory. Yeah. I've heard some of your poetry. Oh no, I'm a little scared. <laughs> so let me see. All right. I'm going to sign off, then we'll record again, because it's easier for me to upload. All right, I'm signing off right now. It's so Lucky Smith.